Wyatt Earp is one of the most iconic figures of the American Wild West. His life has been the subject of numerous books, movies, and legends, yet there are many intriguing facets of his life that often go unnoticed. In this video, we'll explore fascinating facts about Wyatt Earp, shedding light on the man behind the myth and his significant contributions to the history of the Wild West. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting video. He was arrested for murder after the gunfight at OK Corral. On the fateful afternoon of October 26, 1881, the renowned gunfight unfolded in a lot behind the OK Corral. Wyatt Earp, accompanied by his brothers Morgan and Virgil, and their ally Doc Holliday, confronted the Clanton and McLaury brothers. The tense situation escalated when Virgil Earp ordered the cowboys to drop their guns, but shots were fired instead, although it's unclear who pulled the trigger first. The intense shootout, lasting less than a minute, resulted in the deaths of three individuals, Frank and Tom McLaurie and Billy Clanton. Subsequently, the Earps and Holiday faced murder charges but were acquitted in late November 1881. Just a month later, gunmen attempted to assassinate Virgil Earp outside a Tombstone saloon, leaving him injured. In response, Wyatt, now a deputy U.S. Marshal, led a posse to pursue the Clanton gang. Two of the Clanton brothers were surrendered and... Charges related to Virgil's shooting were dropped. Tragedy struck again in March 1882 when gunmen killed Mer Morgan Earp while playing a late game of pool at Campbell and Hatch Billiard Parlor. Seeking retribution, Wyatt and his posse pursued and killed several cowboys. However, these acts of violence tarnished Wyatt Earp's reputation in Tombstone, causing him to eventually leave town. Earp's Complicated Relationship in Tombstone Upon his arrival in Tombstone, Wyatt Earp was accompanied by Maddie Blaylock, whom he referred to as his wife, although their marriage was not officially documented. Maddie was known to suffer from severe headaches, for which she relied on laudanum, a readily available over-the-counter medication containing opiates and alcohol, known for its addictive nature. During that time, Wyatt developed a relationship with Sadie Marcus, who was possibly working as a prostitute for Sheriff Behan before Wyatt's arrival in Tombstone. Both Behan and Earp had offices located above the Crystal Palace Saloon in Tombstone, and their shared interest in Sadie only added to the already strained relationship between the two men. Earp ref refereed a controversial championship boxing match. Notably, on December 2, 1896, he served as the referee for a significant heavyweight championship boxing match featuring Bob Fitzsimmons and Tom Sharkey. The match drew in an audience of approximately 10,000 spectators in San Francisco. During the eighth round of the intense bout, Fitzsimmons seemed to have secured victory by landing a powerful punch on Sharkey, causing him to fall to the canvas. However, in a controversial decision, Earp declared the punch as illegal and disqualified Fitzsimmons. The decision led to swift speculation among boxing enthusiasts, claiming that the match had been rigged. Subsequently, Fitzsimmons took Sharkey to court, but the case was ultimately dismissed. Throughout the ordeal, Earp staunchly maintained his innocence, yet the scandal significantly tarnished his reputation, leaving a lasting scar on his standing in the public eye. Earp built a gambling empire in California. In 1887, Wyatt Earp and Josephine made their way to San Diego, California, arriving even before the railroad reached the town. This fortunate timing allowed him to capitalize on the real estate boom triggered by the railroad's arrival. Wyatt wisely invested in San Diego's real estate market, constructing saloons, gambling halls, and possibly some brothels. Despite this, he maintained an appearance of respectability in his business ventures. In addition, he returned to his previous role of boxing referee and ventured into racing horse investments. However, as the 1880s drew to a close, the San Diego real estate market experienced a collapse, leading to a decline in the town's population. In response, Wyatt and Josephine relocated to San Francisco. Tombstone was a boomtown when the Earps arrived. In the latter half of 1879, the population of Tombstone, Arizona Territory experienced a remarkable surge, doubling within a mere nine months. Wyatt Earp saw this growth as an opportunity to capitalize on the town's expansion by establishing a stage line that would connect Tombstone to remote areas beyond the reach of the railroad. 
However, he soon discovered that two other stagecoach companies were already operating in the rapidly developing town. Later, James Earp found employment as a bartender while Wyatt pursued his career as a gambler. Wyatt was hired in May of 1880 by Wells Fargo agent Fred J. Dodge as a shotgun messenger on stagecoaches when they transported Wells Fargo strongboxes. Despite their efforts, their business ventures in the region, including investments in mines and real estate, alongside their brother Virgil, failed to thrive. Late July 1880, the Earp brothers welcomed the addition of Morgan and Warren Earp, along with the notorious Doc Holliday. Doc arrived in Tombstone with a substantial sum of around $40,000, equivalent to $1.2 million in 2022, which he had won through gambling in Prescott. Earp and Masterson were involved in the fatal shooting of a drunk cowboy. George Hoyt and other drunken cowboys opened fire at around 3 a.m. on July 26, 1878, including three times at Dodge City's Kameek Theater. Fortunately, no one was injured. Accompanied by several others, Hoyt swiftly fled the city, prompting Earp, Masterson, and a posse to pursue them on horseback. Early the next morning, Earp and Masterson caught up with Hoyt near the Arkansas River just south of town. Earp then told biographer Stuart Lake he shot and killed the cowboy during the encounter. However, the Dodge City Times reported that Hoyt suffered from gangrene and died on the 21st of August after having his leg amputated. The incident remained a subject of historical debate. He spent most of his childhood in Pella, Illinois. Wyatt Barry Stapp Earp was born on March 19, 1848 in Monmouth, Illinois bearing the name of his father's esteemed commander from the Mexican-American War. His father engaged in various occupations such as farming, serving as a justice of the peace, and even dabbling in bootlegging, raised young Wyatt in the regions of Illinois and Iowa. When the American Civil War erupted in 1861, the adventurous spirit of youth led Earp to flee from the family farm in an attempt to join the Union Army. Nonetheless, his father intervened, bringing him back home. In 1864, the Earp family set their sights on the western frontier, beginning their journey by wagon train. The arduous trek was riddled with challenges, including Indian raids that tested their mettle. It was during this journey that Wyatt Earp is said to have witnessed his first gunfight, which left an indelible impression on the young man's mind. By the close of 1864, the Earps finally reached the promising lands of San Bernardino, California. Here, Wyatt diligently worked on his father's farm and later in, engaged in freight and worked in railroad camps. Little did he know that these early experiences would pave the way for his illustrious and eventful life of the American West. He was charged with running a brothel in Peoria. In 1872, Earp's life took a tumultuous turn as he found himself in trouble with the law once again. This time, along with his brother Morgan and several women, he faced charges of operating a brothel. After being fined and released, another legal entanglement awaited for him the same fall. He was arrested for running yet another brothel, this time aboard a steamship he owned. During this arrest, a woman named Sally Hecknell claimed to be his wife. During 1873 and 1874, Earp asserted that he spent his time hunting buffalo, though there is no evidence of him actually doing so. He may have made up the story to account for the time he was pimping. After that, Wyatt soon left Peoria for Wichita, Kansas, where his brother James was operating another brothel. Earp was a lawman in the worst city in the Old West. In 1870, Wyatt Earp got his first job in law enforcement as a police officer in Lamar, Missouri, where his family had moved. However, accusations of mishandling public funds led to his departure from the job in 1871. That same year, he faced an arrest for horse theft in Indian Territory, but the case never proceeded to trial. Subsequently, in 1872, Earp found himself in Peoria, Illinois, working as an enforcer in a brothel. Prior to his arrival in Wichita, Kansas in 1874, he spent time as a buffalo hunter. Wichita, a bustling cattle shipping center, Earp was hired as a policeman there. However, after a bitter conflict, he beat a man and left the force the following year. Later, he took on the role of an assistant marshal in Dodge City, Kansas, a city infamous for its wild and lawless reputation in the Old West. 
In the years that followed, Wyatt Earp worked as a lawman in Dodge during the cattle trading season, while the rest of the year he pursued a career as a professional gambler, operating in Texas and New Mexico. Doc Holliday saved Wyatt's life in Dodge City. During the summer of 1878, Doc Holliday and Big Nose Kate, said to be his wife, made their way to Dodge City. Kate, known as a prostitute, and Holliday, a seasoned gambler, had their sights set on relieving the cowboys of their money. One fateful day, a rowdy group of drunken cowboys stormed the Long Branch Saloon where Holliday was gambling. The chaos that ensued after the cowboys fired shots outside, Wyatt Earp, serving as the town marshal, entered the saloon to apprehend the troublemakers. However, to his surprise, he was met with several guns already drawn and aimed at him. In a moment of peril, before Earp could react, Doc Holliday took decisive action. He swiftly pointed his own revolver at the head of one of the cowboys, compelling the others to lower their weapons. Earp later admits Holliday's extraordinary intervention saved his life. Earp was the last surviving participant of the O.K. Corral shootout. Wyatt Earp died in this quaint cottage at 4004 West 17th Street in Los Angeles on January 13, 1929. He was 80 years old. Officially, his cause of death is chronic cystitis. With no children of his own, he left behind a lasting legacy as the last surviving participant of the famous O.K. Corral gunfight. Following his death, his longtime companion, Josephine, arranged for his remains to be cremated and buried in Colma, California. During the last years of his life, Earp entered the world of Hollywood westerners, consulting with filmmakers and forging relationships with various actors and directors. His funeral drew attention from notable figures in the entertainment industry, including renowned western film star Tom Mix, who served as one of the pallbearers. After his passing, Hollywood began portraying Earp as a heroic lawman, largely influenced by the success of Stuart Lake's best-selling 1931 biography, Wyatt Earp, Frontier Marshal, which, though highly embellished, contributed to the proliferation of movies and television series about the iconic figure. Over the years, actors ranging from Henry Fonda to Kevin Costner to Kurt Russell took on the lead role, further immortalizing the legend of Wyatt Earp in popular culture. Wyatt Earp's life was filled with adventure, controversy, and legend. These fascinating facts provide a more nuanced view of the man behind the myth, highlighting his multifaceted career, complex relationships, and the enduring legacy he left on the history of the American Wild West. Wyatt Earp remains an enduring symbol of the challenges and triumphs of those who sought to bring justice to the untamed frontier. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.